Peace family, y'all know who it is. It's Bakari Lumumba, the progenitor of LumumbaSpeaks.com, a black empowerment initiative where we believe we can gain a competitive advantage by always betting on black. Back once again with a short yet powerful video, a needed video, a necessary video, once again honoring Women's History Month, or over here we call it Black Women's History Month, where we're honoring sisters in the struggle. If you don't know, we have our Sisters in the Struggle series of videos where we're discussing and highlighting the life and legacies of prominent black women in three areas of what? African history, that is what? Antiquity, the Middle Ages, and of course, the modern era. So we're back once again with another video. Today we're gonna to be honoring, excuse me, the Baltimore, Maryland born, Cambridge, Maryland raised, Howard University educated, woman who later became known as the Lady General of the Civil Rights Movement, none other than the Queen Mother, Gloria St. Clair Richardson. If you didn't know, Gloria St. Clair Richardson was born May 6, 1922, in Charm City, Baltimore, Maryland. She transitioned less than a year ago to the realm of the ancestors on July 15, 2021, in New York City. So let's get right at it. Before we get started, make sure you hit the subscribe and like button. So, Gloria St. Clair Richardson, known as the Lady General of the Civil Rights Movement. Why did she have such a term? Why was she called a Lady General? Well, if you pay it, if you listen up, you will find out very shortly. So, Gloria St. Clair Richardson was a militant, beautiful, black female leader who drew the angst and ire of prominent black male civil rights figures, as well as then the President John F. Kennedy, right? Martin Luther King took issue with her, took umbrage with her rejecting Nonviolence is a primary strategy in the civil rights movement. She made national headline, national headlines as the leader of the Cambridge, Maryland movement in Eastern Shore, Maryland, in which black people are fighting for racial and economic justice. We'll get into that in just a little bit. However, what is most important is Gloria Sinclair Richardson was also a member, a founding member of Malcolm X's Organization of African American Unity. Let me say that one more time. Gloria St. Clair Richardson, Lady General of the Civil Rights Movement, was a founding member and helped write the charter for Malcolm X's Organization of African American Unity. Many people took umbrage, right, when we talk about the male-dominated, sometimes chauvinistic black power movement culture, took umbrage with the fact that she was a member of the Organization of African American Unity. Malcolm X snapped at his coterie of supporters and acolytes and said, is she qualified? They said, yes, then there's nothing else to be said, right? So we got to give some love to Queen Mother Gloria St. Clair Richardson. Also, I think it's very important that she actually had many people who pushed against her leadership, even though she was a dynamic leader, a great leader, a leader that got results, a leader that focused on bread and butter issues. People took on simply for the fact that she was a woman, that she did not fit the stereotypical conservative concept of a female member of the black freedom struggle that many um, old school civil rights organizations like NAACP, Urban League, CORE, uh, and of course the SELC, thought she, she should have engaged, should have fit, right? So when we talk about these stereotypical views, you wear long dresses, you answer phones, you write letters, but this was a woman who, she was a grassroots leader who was in the streets, putting in the work, confronting white vigilantism, which was a huge issue. And this is one of the reasons why she pushed away. She really stepped away in a very strong manner, in a forceful manner, and clearly articulated why she took umbrage with using nonviolence as a primary strategy in the civil rights movement. For example, her contemporary, Stokely Carmichael, who of course was the Trinidad and Tobago born, Bronx, New York raised, Howard University educated and graduate, uh, who argued that one of the weaknesses of the civil rights movement was the fact that was our impetus on being nonviolent. Now white vigilantes understood, hey, we could go in here and get some free licks because we know they will not fight us back. I understand Dr. King's position on, hey, this will create black, bad press and that we will always be seen as the agitators. But at some point, we know, as Malcolm X stated, the first law of nature is what? To what? You can work in your own best interest and protect yourself, survival. And so Gloria Richardson, a dy dynamic leader, she was successful in fighting against uh, black people who were uh, for, uh, fighting in Cambridge, Maryland, for black people who unfortunately were living in such dilapidated conditions to where you actually had black people, 20 families sharing one outhouse. You had black people in Cambridge, Eastern Shore, Maryland, right? 
in a situation in which they were living in actual chicken shacks. This is not hyperbole, right? This is not hyperbole. I'm not grandstanding. They were literally living in accommodations that were built for farm animals. She said enough is enough. She used her education for liberation. She didn't use her education for simply vulgar careerism, right, to simply be a social climber. She used her education for liberation, and as a result, she was able to have her to come in. Right. This was, of course, during the during the um, during when they were writing the peace treaty, actually, because they actually had to come come to arms, not only with the state, the Maryland state police, but also with the Maryland, of course, National Guard. And so HUD came in and they you know they understood what was taking place and they got concessions to build actual affordable housing uh, that was up to code for, of course, the black and poor residents of Cambridge, Maryland. But also she had addressed issues of economic injustice, right? This is the 1960s. You have black people, unfortunately, still living without indoor plumbing, still living without heating and hot water, still working in what was basically quasi-sharecropping situations on, of course, white people's farms and plantations. So when we want to honor sisters in the struggle, we have to understand that you can't teach or speak about black history if you don't of course, honor both male and female. And as queen mother, one of our greatest ancestors, an actual uh, founding member of the first Pan-African Conference in 1900, and of course, England stated, and as Julia Cooper, if you do not honor both male and female, you do harm to both male and female because there's both a male and female side to truth. So that's all I have in honoring and our legacy of honoring sisters in the struggle. If you ever get a chance, please get do some research Google Queen Mother Gloria Sinclair Richardson, black feminist, black womanist activist, leader of the Cambridge Maryland movement, who was known as the Lady General of the Civil Rights Movement. Until next time, peace. Before you go, make sure you hit the subscribe and like button. Thank you for supporting the channel. And remember, here at Lumumba Speaks, we always bet on black. Peace.